Thank you. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Uh, this is, I've been coming to East Denver since 2019. So it's been really exciting to see this event growing. So I'm really excited to be here. And uh, if you missed, uh, I've before kind of my blockchain uh, journey, I actually was for about 10 years um, machine learning researcher and developer. I worked at Google Research, and a team of us have developed a technology called Transformers. And for those who are not familiar, it is what powers most of the advancements right now in uh, in AI. Now, Near actually started as AI startup. We were teaching machines to code. We were trying to change how you interact with computing. And we had a challenge ourselves that as we were uh, interacting with different uh, participants to curate more data and do crowdsourcing, we needed to pay them. Uh, and they were everywhere in, in, around the world. And you would think that crypto is that global payment network that uh, can enable this. Back in 2018, it was not the case. And this is when we really focused on building out near protocol and a blockchain that can actually power um, global usage of cryptocurrency, as well as a lot of other use cases. Now, the vision we set out to do is really to build self-sovereignty. The way we define this is that we want all people to have control of their assets, data, and power of governance. And these are important uh, pieces to understand, right? We talk a lot about self sovereignty uh, around kind of being able to control your own assets, but it spans beyond that. And it's especially important, you know, I grew up in Ukraine, and, you know, kind of the failure of banks, the hyperinflation is something that I'm, I grew up with. Uh, I wouldn't trust, you know, many banks in Ukraine with a lot of money, for sure. And, uh, for, you know, we, I've seen kind of inflation of initially coupons and now Grivna as well uh, that continues to happen. But beyond that, it's also what we have now with data. Uh, and I'll talk about more of this. And so the, I think the important part, this is not just developing country problem. This is really a global problem that we have that we starting to lose our, our control over our lives. Uh, and kind of this is what the important part of power of governance is. So there are two major problems converging right now. There is one that is really about the incentives. And this is not a new problem. The, two, the, kind of the beginning of Bitcoin with you know, a global financial crisis was banks who leveraged and leveraged their position to really create new financial instruments without any transparency and then kind of to generate more profit and led to a financial crisis. Similarly, we have now with tech companies who are able to leverage their position, their access, their distribution to put high fees in App Store to really kind of uh, ha pretty much promote products and even manipulate the way you are perce perceiving products through advertisement. And these are, again, with the age of AI now accelerating. Because even before uh, you know, machine learning been used for a long time in advertisement, now you're able to have this advertisement being injected directly into the answer that you're asking ChatGPT or Gemini or any other chatbot, and you wouldn't even know if it was coming from a statistical model based on general data or it has been affected by an ad auction and price and kind of sold for specifically you to you know, promote this product or this opinion or this idea. And this is extremely dangerous, and this is where we're starting to lose, in many ways, control of the reality, because the reality is now framed by you know, the media you consume, the uh, kind of products you're using. And if they are controlled by single parties that have kind of mo their motivation is really driven by this incentives, you know, shareholder profits, they always will be continuously trying to increase that value extraction uh, and cha to change your opinion. Now, again, this is not a like, uh, isolated problem. It affects everyone in the digital world. And this is just news from last week. This is like not even hard. It took two minutes to pull, you know, all kinds of ways that right now the current system is trying to uh, 
figure out how to deal with this, right? It's everything from you know, OpenAI that was originally a nonprofit, now making billions of dollars. You have people who are you know, suing Google because it has such a manipulistic control over advertisements. You have you know, approaches which are scaring people with Sora. So you have all of those things happening right now. And I would claim that companies don't do it on purpose, right? There's no like evil mastermind sitting there and, and saying like, hey, we really need to manipulate people. This is really the incentive problem. The problem that as a, you incentivize to create more revenue, you incentivize to figure out how to extract more value, and you will be continuously making these models to do that. Now, this is really combined with you know all the other world kind of challenges we have, right? And again, I'm from Ukraine. I see <laughs> a very uh, clear problems with dictators who are controlling countries, right? Being able to really change the world and perception of the population in such a way that they normalize the war and killing of people who are really their, you know, actually blood uh, relatives. And so we really need to actually address these challenges at a fundamental level. And I would say that regulators, the approaches that are top down that come in from boardrooms or from uh, kind of a small set of regulators trying to think how to improve the situation will not work for example the ai regulations right now the there is an executive order that came out of white house that makes no sense they are restricting innovation by saying that if you have more than some number of parameters, you're not able to do it unless you have like a team or, that will be ethically evaluating the models. They have not defined any of the criteria for what is ethical and what is you know, safe for the models. And what it means is they're actually let, making the big, bigger companies being able to control that even more because they have the resources and funds to really set up these teams and market them as you know really important part of the process whereas startups and innovators are not able to whereas open source that is truly at the core of what we're doing is not able to do that and this is really kind of one of the most challenging thing and we see the same thing with regulations in crypto where like the regulators don't understand the fact that using crypto is the way to regulate this we have the opportunity to leverage this technology to actually self-regulate and provide transparency and visibility to everyone. And so we have this fork in the road, right? On one side, we have a black mirror state where we have few companies that really control the way people perceive reality, the way people buy products, the way people you know, consume content. Or we have a self-sovereign uh, route, which is really about each individual having the ability to do this, each community having their own right and way, and you have a choice. If you want to use you know, centralized company, you have that choice, but you should be able to also switch to alternative. The alternative and startups should be able to innovate and create alternative products, not require a you know, ton of licenses to just start building a model in Python notebook. Like that's, that's a level of regulations right now that's happening. And so, it's really important for us to AI proof our systems. AI is an extremely powerful tool. I'm really excited at what, you know, the progress we've seen, and I'm excited to you know, contribute and, and see even more progress. But we also need to understand that this is, can be used to do all these bad things, and we need our systems, which right now rely on paperwork, on unsecure connections, on you know, ability to look at the content and don't know where it came from, to really leverage cryptography, leverage blockchain, leverage all of the technologies we're building to AI proof it. It's about decentralized and transparent digital systems that will allow to have incentives to be transparent and clear to everyone. Instead of right now, you have opaque systems inside bigger companies and bigger banks. It's new collaboration structures that we can all come together to promote open source, to develop new tooling, to enable it to be used by everyone, and if you are making money off it, to contribute back in kind. And finally, it's about kind of scaling the markets and allowing anybody to participate in an open way uh, without boundaries, without you know, trying to prove your background or where you came from or what's you know, any other property, but really being able to participate. So we are kind of as near being always thinking about this. And 
for us, this all comes together as self-sovereign operating system. It's really something that, as we kind of interact with computing, we need a different way of doing this. And now it builds up on traditional operating systems, Web2 operating systems. There's a huge component of private data and decentralized data. There's a huge component of user-owned AI, an ability for you as a user to have your AI that's on your side, being able to kind of shield and decide what content and how it should be summarized that you define. Similarly, you, can, you have user-owned AI that, is def that works for a community on behalf of community and powers that. You have trustless infrastructure, and you have experiences that are now more generated and less like by your own model and really provides to you uh, as a service. So, the trustless infrastructure, this is something we're building here, right? We here at this Denver, a lot of us are building other infrastructure applications on top of it. And it's all about self-sovereignty, you know, that private key kind of cryptography that enables this. But now we need to push forward to enable communities to govern this, to enable to have a uh, really easy way to onboard new users. And this is one of the components why we've been focused on chain abstraction, on enabling really a way for anyone to onboard and use Web3 without thinking about the blockchain, gas fees, bridges, low-level infrastructure, ideally even wallets and uh, other pieces if you don't need to. And this is really how we bring the next wave of users. They're not going to come because of the uh, values per se, they're going to come because it's easy to use, it's new content, it's new opportunity, and they're able to do this. As near, we've been doing this uh, since mainnet, and we are proudly a home for top consumer applications. We have over 10 million monthly active users, most of whom don't know they're using blockchain. They use it through different applications like Kaiching and Sweatcoin, PlayEmber and Hot Wallet to really interact with all of the Web3 without thinking about the kind of underlying details, gas fees, and other pieces of infrastructure that we all, you know, really working on. Now, the other piece is user-owned AI. I think this is extremely important because right now, the alternative is companies, centralized companies that fully control the model, that are able to provide you an answer really fast, potentially cheap, but you have no idea what you're getting into, right? You have no idea what decisions went in into training data, into how the systems prompts were affected, and how things actually uh, been processed when you see them, right? There's no way to ensure that the thing you're getting has not dropped a specific piece of content from the training data, which completely av potentially avoids a whole spectrum of thinking because of whatever political view or any other view that that company had. And remember, this company is a jurisdiction in a specific country, and they need to comply by those regulations. And so there's always will be limitations on what these models can do. And so open source AI models are extremely important. Public data sets are extremely important. Figuring out how do we get models that run on your phone, that owned by you, that are on your side and are not trying to manipulate you is extremely important. And this is where even further you can imagine community models that are uniting values of any specific community and providing way to kind of interact with the knowledge and experiences of this community. This is all important and this is all need to work on. And so I'm inviting everyone here to think beyond just Web3, because we sometimes get really focused on the philosophy, on the kind of values we establish here. Or sometimes, as Chris uh, was talking before, we have you know, a casino, and it's, it's entertaining. There's a lot of fun. You, know, you can go DJ and the coins on, on exchange. But all of that is serves a purpose, and it serves a purpose to create new economic opportunity, create new really cool applications you cannot have in Web2 because it's new marketplaces, it's new opportunities that are global and enable new, like, new experiences for people. And so it's easy to get caught up in, in kind of our you know, market going up and everybody being excited about this, but I encourage everyone to think through how do we get beyond this, how do we onboard new wave of users, what experiences can we build, as well as how do we bring and solve problems that exist in real world, right? Again, open source AI is something that is 
being constantly squished right now because there's no incentives to actually build in open source. And you have so much more incentives building in, in uh, big companies. How do we leverage that? How do we leverage technology to bring self-sovereignty to everyone, make sure that intelligence as a tool is available to everyone at all times and is not controlled by single parties? How do we make sure that we have and continue having access to all the content and at the same time are not spammed by generated content that is fake and be able to discern and have a reputation around content? All of these pieces, we have the technology, we have now into the infrastructure, and so now it's really about building the applications. So I thank everyone. If you're interested to learn more about what I'm working on, follow me on Twitter. And uh, self-sovereignty is near, so I hope we can all work on this. Thank you, Ilya. That was great. Really important stuff. Really appreciate it. Uh, we're going to go to a short break. And uh